Good afternoon, Abbotsford residents. I'm in beautiful British Columbia, Abbotsford, BC. I want to start my podcast today by thanking the many Abbotsford residents and families that came forward to help along this journey on the organized crime of Henry Braun, Mike DeYoung, and Ed Fast. Dominating our city, rigging elections, and above all, the head of the Abbotsford Police. I want to explain something to you before I begin this podcast. I drive in and out every day to Vancouver on this jam-locked highway for many years, working in the developments for walls and aquilinis and everywhere. Never one time in that major lock have I been caught road raging, speeding, nothing. Not all them years, that will show you. That's my history. When the Abbotsford police targeted me in the election and targeted me bad, and came after me day after day for road rage, driving without due care and attention. It was all revved up, and I knew it was coming because I saw what he did to Eric Nival and Bruce Bannon. Henry Brown saw Nival and Bruce as a political figure, and when they laid down and didn't challenge his garbage with taking signs and threats, Henry thought he could do it to everybody and anybody. He came up the wrong driveway, when he attacked residents, families, and homeowners. But Henry used this. He had Bob Rich. Remember Bob Rich? I told you the other day. Bob Rich and Mike Sears used to hang together. When I learned from Darren Brown of the abuse under the APD, and the abuse it was, men and women that took initials, I want to explain to you. I want them to hear directly today. When you're a CEO or a foreman, or a staff sergeant, or an undercover and investigating officer, you're above everybody else, and you have an obligation more than anybody else. And when you ask to be ranked up there, your job is clear what you must do. Now these coward pieces of shit now hide in their office. Today I want them matched up. I showed you for months and months on them on your tax dollars, just when you go to work and you get screamed, what the hell are you doing standing around? ripping off taxpayers, unbelievable. There was nobody running it. When I saw George Murray and Darren Brown showed me that, and I saw Peter Sparanese, but when I saw Henry fuck the election to load Ross Siemens so jobs could be lifted, I knew he was collaborating and racketeering, but I saw him with the MP and Ed Fast and MLA Michael D. Young that's trying to do everything to get into the federal conservatives for protection. Cover, threaten, and block. This was up to Abbotsford residents to do their own police work, bring investigators in, led with me, go to other municipality. And again, I wanna just back up a little bit here. I wanna see how grateful I am to the mission RCMP. When I saw Henry, in front of the city with Ross and council in his house, scamming the $71 million out for the police building to Unitech. Unnecessary, using council to drive it and Ross to become the mayor so they could scam that through. I know kicks and perks and jobs. They were inflating that off of taxpayers. I knew that this police department was in bad trouble, real bad trouble. So I had plenty of time being in Vancouver to study what the VP do do and how they don't care about mayors and MLAs and MPs and study with the RCMP. That meant I had to come in and restructure the Abbotsford police outright because it was violating its own residents and threatening. But they had an office upstairs here at the VPD where they went upstairs and made the community think that this office was about big, important business to do with gangs, gangs, cartels, and everything else. It was a shit fucking coward bunch of losers hiding upstairs in an office that couldn't address their problems because it was ultimately internally. I knew when I went to the Premier Bill Vanners and his MLAs in GE, North American's regional manager, and said, if I run for mayor to the GE man, Will you come in and manage the city and refinance it? Not a better man that could do that. That's GE, General Electric, if you want to hear that. 
So I put this team together on the misfits. When I showed you with their fingers up their ass and what they were doing, they all got scared. Now they have to be under the public eye. So what did they do? Let me show you what they did. Now they all have to sit here. Look how many cars sit here now, not out, because the general community is walking. That works in my favor in Abbotsford residents. Them are the fucking black cars. See that right there? That one? And all them black Jeeps and them black cars with them bars that got the dogs in to ring my house. And them officers came. You lost the fucking election, you prick. Them are the task force officers to deal with the gangs. Now, I'm asking Abbotsford wives of the police to come forward and help me if your husband works undercover to please come help me and Abbotsford residents because they viciously threatened me and they blocked the election. It wasn't police business. They were ordered to block that election to load Ross. Something that you cannot do is block a candidate and then threaten that candidate. And they did that. I need them wives to come forward and tell me if your husbands work on the task force and who they are. Because the Abbotsford police and the staff sergeants and the commanders have made no e effort, not at all, but to sit there, oh, Mike DeYoung and Ed Fast and Vicky Hopes will save us, and threaten residents. That wasn't an internal thing with a resident and a fine. You know, you got a speeding ticket and you argue or you rent a stop sign. It was a direct threat. For them lazy, useless fucking assholes that ran around Henry Bragdon in the newspaper with Bob Rich, they're the best, they're the best, to internally do this. When these guys go out at night and Abbotsford residents is not aware of it, you got to think of them black vehicles of who they're molesting, raping, beating up and stealing from. It's internal. Now that will put the task force in great jeopardy, but it has to be because they would not do it internally. I give them chances with Abbotsford residents to the upper management and the safety standards act to get it done internally and they weren't. We'll just lock the fucking doors. We'll hold the company down. And then they got all them residents just have to squirm like dogs and we'll, we'll, we'll just keep carrying fucking on. Now it comes to this level that I have to stand and say to Abbotsford wives of the police force, your husbands are on that task force. These were our children that they threatened in our municipal election that they did and continued to rig it. Them are the black vehicles. Them man faces are screened from gangs and everything. I need you to come forward and help because you shouldn't be targeted in your community. Just like the Abbotsford police ask victims to come forward, testify and help them. I'm asking you to help me if your husband's on that task force. That puts him in great jeopardy, which they should have knew this was coming. Then they would have to transfer them out to Langley or Surrey or Chilliwack or somewhere else. What then puts that police force in jeopardy? It has to go. It has to fucking go. That shit upstairs ran this. That shit upstairs had no, no more accountability to the public. But when Henry went in, when Henry Brown ran in, hit and ran me, put me in the hospital, endangered my life, threatened me with Olinoff, Abbotsford Police wouldn't charge the head of their mob boss. That ain't law enforcement. That's these bitches doing things. Uh, you know who the fuck we are? I'm a staff sergeant and a drug force officer and a commander. You can't come fucking at me. Little did they know what you can do and what a person must do when you're talking about organized crime. They have to have Mike and Ed, the Mike DeYoung, Ed Fast, and Vicky Hopes that Henry was calling at, try to save this fucking company. And you could see Ed's got his ass kicked to the wall. Mike DeYoung doesn't know where his head is because he realizes an MP ain't gonna save him. And Henry Brown went flying. That is why they're failing. They can't live without their leader. They're like a, a bee. When the bee, when the queen bee swarms, all them other ones don't know what to do, so they're just falling all over. But cauliflower ears, instead of having the time to come to residents and say, this is gonna explode, it's gonna compromise your whole fucking team and bad. Gangs will see your teams, and that is rightfully so, because this is your human beings' lives and human beings' families. That man's flesh is no better than my flesh. That man in that black car, when they brought them nine cars, did that with all the neighbors. This piece of shit went up there and went, oh, you know what, I, I, look at my the fucking uniform. Look at the fucking uniform. My fucking uniform will fix it. My fucking uniform. Nobody will come in here and smash the fucking doors. Then solve that, 40, that 75 million. I'm asking and I'm pleading the Abbotsford wives and small families. 
And if you really want to help, you can contact me and you know my social media with these residents and I will show you the victims that were victimized by these men, these houses. And I will let you hear these little kids that witnessed this shit. This shit in the black car. They figured his teeth couldn't go down his throat and uh, I'll be safe. You're not talking the lower man of the police that run this. You're talking them unmarked cars. That meant them men are on that high ranking cops. So what they have to do, let me tell you what the fucking losers gotta do. The losers now gotta realize his whole team's fucked. Compromised and fucked. He's gotta scream to the province for internal help because some residents went and did this. And we're more important than everybody else. Remember who pays them like George Ferguson. That's your money that goes there. So you're well protected. That you shouldn't be threatened by that. Them fuckers up star were doing it. It's an easy thing. They do not know, I told you the other day, and I laid it out with their finger up their ass, their scope of their work. Let me explain how simple it is. I want to explain because I had the premiers and everybody. You create witnesses, you create documents, and you interview and you lock it in and it goes to the court. That's a simple thing. They figured they were going to be smarter. We won't create any reports, any incidents, any investigations, and we'll hold it out for Henry Brown. Henry Brown had the officer's back phone numbers. The man behind, the man on top, Henry Brown pointed his brother on there. Mark Warkentine, who rigged an election when he was in England and was a part of Abbotsford first. So I want to explain to you how bad that is. These were Henry's outlets, Mike DeYoung, and Fast and Abbotsford News. As the Abbotsford News, Vicky Hopes held it down, Darren Brown showed me when Ken and uh, Rick Rakes were there and Tyler Olson hold it down, the community would not get to see. It wasn't about the community to see, that's why I didn't take, I took social media. It's about dignitaries, politicians, social media and everybody to see. Vicky Hopes was a fool and so was Ken. These are people's lives and my lives that was targeted. Them fucking shithole cowards couldn't face me like a man and go one-on-one -on -one when we did that and fought. They came up there in uniforms and uniforms were gonna buy their sympathy to get away with Henry's orders to load the elections for job sites. They frauded the 71 million. There's no saving the company. You can't save it. And they're up there today. You can see them all home. Look at them, all home. Out, get out of the public's eyes. They're up there today, these losers that did this, trying to brainwash each other in the back meeting upstairs behind the glass up there of how can we fix this? I'll tell you what we need to do. How can we do it? It was internally diseased and it was functioning wrong and it was organized crime. They can't be transferred to another police force. They can't be giving another chance because not only, let me lay this out, when Henry Brown got old enough to threaten to drop a fucking lawsuit and videos and Brenda Falk threatened with the ministry, let me tell you the, what the RCMP know and do and I'll, I'll even tell you that because Cauliflower Ears is not trained. You wiretap the man's phone because it's threats. It's threats by an officer that's taking orders from the mayor and he's at the mayor's house constantly all day long. And as the staff sergeant once said here, he goes there to do a beat of cocaine off of Henry's private before coming to work. He meant he was Henry's bitch. And that there lays in Victoria on the safety, uh, the police complaints commission. I believe you can look at that there. And then lie that there was break-ins and Henry had cash. When these men get fired and kicked out of here, they still have reach behind the phone, behind the scenes on the phone. Mike Sir will still have reach into here to behind here on the phone. Henry Brown still has reach in here behind on the phone. All these people have reach. They shouldn't have reach. Nobody should have reach. Mike DeYoung, Ed Fast, Henry Brown, Mr. Pelican, Abbotsford residents, and everybody. And officers that have been let go should never be, or vice officers like Mike Sir and Bob Rich should never be allowed to contact this office again. The RCMP make it clear to everybody, you're not coming in for favors. 
file your reports and that. So ladies and gentlemen, them are the black cars that did this through the election. Them are the task force forces that are on the drugs and secure their faces. As your mayor, they'd all be gone, I made it clear the Bill Vanners and the RCMP are in. Ed Fast, Mike DeYoung, and the Abbots for News that Henry can work need to beg through his political ring, because Henry caused that hit and run, these threats, to save this private company. It was their way of doing business in illegal criminal activity. City Council's in his house, warding the decision over the general public, racketeering, in, insider trading, and everything. But this went beyond anybody's imagination. Then this used its name and its shield. Nobody will believe anybody else. They only believe us. They'll only believe us. You know, look at what we've been doing. That is why I went to the Premier, to the RCMP, and the RCMP made it witnesses on witnesses on witnesses on witnesses on witnesses. That whole fucking task force, in my opinion, have been going out, raiding drug cartels, taking that shit, selling it illegal, probably in bed with these guys like Henry and Ed and Mike, because that there should have never happened. They shouldn't have rung my house through an election. There no, was no ever internal fighting with me over the Abbotsford police. I stood up on Henry Braun of what he did with his son and what Ed Fast and Mike DeYoung did. They activated their mob, their head of the gang. They activated it. So now these officers realize that they're done and they have to be done, not transferred to another police department. Oh, he was, you know, he was good. He, 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 he took down the big gangs. Oh, he broke a hundred cases. We have to go back and look how many people are screaming in jail that they were framed by these fucking dwarf, sick, in the fucking vigils who saw children come to the front of the police department with me to tell them this did happen and they hit upstairs. Dwarf fucking twisted assholes running around on your time cards. Now they're scared. Look at all their vehicles here. Oh, geez, the fucking public could come at us. I want to explain something. The RCMP made it clear when I went over to them. We have to give them a chance to bring the inter RCMP in or the Police Complaints Commission in and catch this. Mike Sear didn't make that. Mike Sear covered Henry's shit with Mogill to threaten him so Henry could win the election and threaten it. It's the RCMP that said tape that. Henry's illegal, all his illegal shit. Henry had money and he bought his way personal protection and threats. And he carried this abuse on till it went out of control. But these men didn't differ between the law and organized crime. They went and joined the organized crime. That is why I'm asking all the Abbotsford women. I know how many people work on the Abbotsford police. And I could tell you, I'll state it again, Dix and Kern, Kaminsky and, and all these people and even old fat Sleemans never came to my house and threatened. Olenoff threatened, Gertie Purdy did, but them black vehicles did it. Now these black vehicles are sitting here as this warped fucking piece of shit that just came in here put this company in bigger liability because I would have did it through the back doors with Abbotsford residents to the RCMP, and he wouldn't do it. He sat there believing that this is his company. So I'll tell you, you shove your company up your asshole, this belongs to Abbotsford residents and families. They pay them tax dollars. They demand accountability and the law like everybody else. This was self-centered company running itself and heads up their asshole every day. Standing around when you walk in the door, I'm hanging on this re the receptionist here. And then we're secret meetings upstairs. Let's talk about the gangs. When your own officers brought you here to see Henry beating Bob Rich up in the morning meeting, telling you that Olenoff's at Henry's house, there was never no break-ins we searched, passing information everywhere, and they're upstairs having a secret meeting behind the gang's back? Are the gangs? I don't think so. I think they got some woman up there they picked up off of one of these streets again, these prostitutes, and all of them are having their way up there behind everybody's back. Because their uniforms, is what they bet their reputation on, not their morals and ethics and principles, not their own human flesh. They stood there, and now they're in panic mode. 
So let me tell you what you got to do, guys. I want to show you. You got to come out and you got to break my ribs. Come out tonight, get your guns, get your rifles. Come up to them homeowners and everybody, and you realize that you're all fucked and you got to come up and break my ribs. That is what I would expect out of you if you were a fucking man wetter than this piece of shit. No uniform. I want to record these words. Abbotsford judge said, nobody's above the law. Nobody can use the law. No one can bend it. No one thinks at the end, they only think at the beginning. That whole fucking task force is fucked. That whole fucking thing that works undercover is fucked. They got to go to Vicky Hopes and release press after press after press after press after press. They had the way to do it because I've worked in many big cities and I know what the police need to do to catch the other guys that are at the top selling and working crime. Henry Brown drove the whole shit and called all the shots. And you can see it today, calling all the shots. They don't know which way to go, and what to do. But no resident and families and should be victimized by these guys. So that's why I went to the world stage, because it needed to stop. They need to go. And it needs to send the, the message out. Nobody's above the law. Mike Sir and all your top officers have got to be gone. No matter how much they scream, and they're going to scream like little bitches. It wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Oh, Jesus, fuck, if you get rid of me, the gangs will know who I am. They're going to look out how many people were. If you transfer me to gangs, because that means you fucked other people over bigger, and they're going to come for you. The body of the law is clear. The man threatened. Removed the protest that peacefully moved. Came in his Alexis car to the protest. Hit and ran and fled, first fleeing from the scene of the accident. And then asked you bitches to cover it up because he was ahead of the gang. He was ahead of the politicians here in Abbotsford. He was calling the shots. Then when I went to the proper people to run in the election, to get it audited and stopped, he figured he'd do another one. I get my fucking bitches. Look at these bitches. I'm promising them that for a new, a new ripping out of the building. Lazy assholes that never had anything. This man was supposed to be a businessman. He was supposed to cut all these costs and cut this overtime. He didn't. He was rewarding them in perks. And I'll get my bitches to come up there and do it. Your bitches today are on their face. There's no Mike DeYoung standing here. No Henry Brown standing here praising these bitches. No Ed Fast. They're trying to work the back doors. David Eby, if you don't come in here and help this, David Eby, You'll be a disgrace, David Eby, because you're trying to beg it in Surrey. You'll be a fucking human disgrace everywhere. It ain't David Eby's responsibility. I want to make that clear. Pamela Alexis fucked that up. This was Mike de Jong, Michael de Jong's. This was Michael de Jong's responsibility. And like a judge said, bring him before me and I'll punish him. But I can't do nothing out there. There's two ways to get the truth, Mr. Pelican. The pressure of the law or alcohol. I said there was three. He thought I was going to beat him. The third way was Darren Brown. So did the task force. Abbotsford residents, I'm asking your wives on the task force and the integrated and everybody who works behind the scene to come forward. Tell me who your husband is and identify him to me. Because I want the full weight of the law and the process of the law. I don't want to hear this shit story that, oh, this puts the company in danger. This, this will crap the whole system. The cops won't be able to do it. That is about them and only them, only them. They're upstairs brainwashing. They probably got cauliflower bent over and they got them fingers up his ass listening to him. You have to dismantle, you have to restructure and we have to go back to the general public and it got out of hand. Them or all of them, look at them sit here today because cauliflower is trying to discipline them now and find out who it is. You can't. They gotta be let go. And when you hear him scream, you fucking stupid police chief, I've been here 20 years. You know he's mad because he's caught. They should have did what was right and they didn't. They kept going, this fucking company, nobody will take this company. Look at this fucking company, look at it. Not a one of them, when I flash these cameras with these homeowners and bring them politicians like the federal conservatives and the BC conservatives, come out here and tell me not to shoot a video because I'm hellbent. And let me make it clear to the task force, the commanders, and all them bitches sitting upstairs and realize I'm hellbent. And hellbent I am on the full weight of the law. That means you're fucking dismissal, dragged by your scarfy fucking ass and skidded down the road like the fucking rats you are and go through you on audits, on audits, on audits, on audits. 
when Darren Brown told me if a forensic audit came of what Henry was doing, how my dad was selling land, how my dad sat on council and was passing decisions and everything, he said it'd be unbelievable. Then I asked the Premier to run. So today, ladies and gentlemen, that is what I'm asking you from my heart for Abbotsford residents and these little victims. If your husband works here on the Abbotsford APD and is a part of the undercover police that can't see their faces and drive them unmarked cars, come forward and help us because we want the justice and the law and we want them called out because we got to find out how many victims they go rape at night and abuse at night and do this. They're big boys. They know the law just as well as I do. So I'm live here at Cauliflower's VPD. And again, I want to make this clear. The RCMP mission allowed the Abbotsford homeowners to go in there to get the proper authorities. So wiretaps on Henry's phones, Olinoff's phones, and it could have been done right. It wasn't done right. The police didn't kick in that way. It kicked in and blocking, locking the doors. We own the fucking company. We own the fucking company. We own the fucking cars. That means Henry was controlling it. And then it was game over. So to the VP, to the Abbotsford police, I work with the Vancouver VPD, and I see how fast they kick in when I ask them to come to my sites on threats and on this, and how they work, and Coquitlam and everywhere. But them are the black cars, right there. Them are unmarked black cars that came and not only ringed it, but came up, hey, you little bitch, you lost the fucking election. Real big boys. You can't touch me, I'm in uniform. I don't need to touch you. I don't need to touch you. When everybody sees your face and recognize who you are, you know you gotta flee because you fucked enough people over. And that means I will ask this, that other law enforcement doesn't take you in because you compromised them, even though you were undercover. And it's vital. Cauliflower comes out and speaks and says the whole team's compromised. Uh, Abbotsford, we can't defend you, we can't steal from you, we can't, we don't know what to do, Abbotsford. The law is clear, and it's black and white. Nobody's allowed to threaten. Nobody's allowed to get in the car and try to kill somebody. Nobody's allowed to ask officers to block. Nobody can cover that up, but nobody, nobody can block a fucking election for greed and get a fucking building and figure that ain't, you know, I, I, they'll never stop this building. I'm gonna get that 71 million. That little bitch Ross has got his head so far up his ass, he had to ask his dad to come and do it. And if his dad was the mayor, he would have had this thing ended and settled right away because he came right to me and said, listen, Mr. Pelican, this shit's fucking way out of control of what they did. No uniform protects them to the task force. I told you I rip your fucking head right off of you no matter what you are because you knew better having them ranks on your fucking coat. So go rip them off. When gangs, gangs, let's talk about the gangs. We want to have a speech about the gangs last night. Look at the gangs. Sitting right there in them black cars. Gangs were here. Do you know the gangs took over the whole world? Gangs were, I want to talk to you about the gangs. Gangs. When I saw Henry inflating that shit to get money from the province and everything, on the homeless shelters and everything. And I had the teacher, Darren Brown. Please help us and show who your husbands are undercover and help us so we can bring them to justice and help us defund the Abbotsford police. So this tax season, let's pull our taxes. Let's rally here with all these victims that are coming in and the people that helped me on the campaign and rally here to shut it down and shut it down fucking tight. I'm live at the shit squad.